Live from San Francisco, it's theCUBE. Covering Informatica World 2016. Brought to you by Informatica. Now, here are your hosts, John Furrier and Peter Burris. Okay, welcome back everyone. We are here live in San Francisco for Informatica World 2016, a special presentation by SiliconANGLE Media's theCUBE, our flagship program. We go out to the events and extract the signal from the noise. I'm John Furrier, my co-host, Peter Burris, head of research with SiliconANGLE Media, as well as general manager of our Wikibon research practice. Our next guest, CUBE alumni, Amit Walia, who's the EVP, Chief Product Officer for Informatica. Welcome back to theCUBE, great to see you. Good to be here, John. I uh, love the conversations when you come on, because the, the product focus is always the, the fun part, because you can really get in and see kind of you know, what's out there, mm -hmm. shipping and announced. Also, you have to look at the future, you have the 20 mile stare. Yep. And I got to say, in 2014, when I interviewed your, your predecessor, who's now the CEO, uh, and the, so was, he talked about some of the product stuff in 2014, yep. the Amazon reInvent. Mm -hmm. It all happened. You guys shipped it, you're delivering. Yep. On that same vector and trajectory in data engagement, keys to the kingdom, we talked about things like how do you figure all this stuff out in a horizontally scalable mm -hmm. cloud world with a lot of disparate systems and data being at the center of the value proposition. So congratulations. Well, thank you. Uh, the show is, is, is fantastic, love, love, the, love the action. So first question is, what's going on right now with the product? Just quickly take us through the highlights sure. of what's um, new in terms of existing products mm -hmm. and what's net new that was announced here that's going to ship in June. Got it. Yeah, so, so if you think of the basic premise that we believe that if we're in a data 3.0 world where data is the new control point. I mean, you know, there's so much choice in apps, so many choice in databases. The world is coming towards data more and more. So we have basically, we have three tenets to a product strategy. The first one is, which has been traditionally been Informatica's forte, is that we build best of breed products. Whether it's integration, quality, MDM, security, best of breed products, and there our journey continues. Whether it's for big data, whether it's for cloud, whether it's for IoT, for all things data, we have the best products for you. But where it becomes truly interesting is that, as I said, in the data 3.0 world, where the world is moving towards data, you know, enterprises need a data platform where you can truly unify all your data. I mean, we were talking about context, right? How do you get context? Your customer data sits in so many apps, so many databases. How do you bring it all together to, for me to know, John, who you are and what you like? That's the data platform, which has okay, the Okay, so content. I got to ask, data, data 3.0, I got to push back, I'm not pushing back, I like the name, but I want to drill down and understand what it actually means. Yep. And I'll use an analogy. Web 2.0 was Ajax, yeah. was the first kind of thing that made people go, oh, it's different than a web page. And then you saw real time, obviously social networks came out of that whole, that whole revolution. Uh, and data, obviously the first wave of that kind of consumerization phase. <clears throat> What can we point to that, that is data 3.0? What is the poster child of data 3.0? Is it self-service dashboards? Is it the data? Is there something that you could highlight so I can get my mind around what is data 3.0? I mean, so that, I'll give you two examples. Data 3.0 is the world where data is the disruptor and data is not an output of things. An example of that is, I think Anil, you, Anil talked about it yesterday. House of Cards, Netflix created that show by actually looking at data. They had a demo demography in mind, they had a genre in mind, they knew who they wanted to target for advertisements, and they went out and basically created a show based on all the things that they wanted to do upfront. Versus a typical show, where you create a show, put it out there, and hope it does well. It was a completely opposite way of doing it. That's data out. I mean, we all know around us, like Uber, Airbnb, they're companies that are leveraging data. They don't have any product, but they are connecting data. That's the world where organizations take car companies. They're looking at data to disrupt what they're trying to do with their customers, engage better, or leverage data in an IoT world to do you know, much more better robotics on their shop floor. So that world... So where is it a consumer experience or is it a product disruptor or so both? It's two things. Much better customer engagement and experience. And the second one to me is completely disrupting what I call operational uh, experiences within an organization. I mean, there are two things. You build things or you sell things. Both are getting disrupted by data. And that's where more data than predictive, cognitive comes into play. But that's a data-driven economy, which we call data 3.0. And in that world, when you have data across 3,000 cloud apps, as I said, how do you even get the context of who, John, you are? So there you have to come to data to then make decisions. How do I sell to you? How do I make you stickier? So that's the second part, and the third part that you asked me is that, you know, Informatica was always a technology product company. Our expansive strategy of platform is a first big step forward. The third one is solutions. 
much, much more getting closer to business. I mean, data, business wants data today to make decisions now. So they are looking to us provide out of the box. You're a solution. data technology platform though. That's really yeah, kind of the core so position. Exactly. Right? So, but what we're doing now is that basically giving you out of the box solutions. Like for example, for customer engagement, a customer 360 solution, which you can very quickly start getting to have a full view of your customer, Nordstrom uses that, right? Nordstrom is a great example of a customer that connects their rack, mm -hmm. the online, the store, through our 360 to say, how are you, John, if you walk into my store, I know exactly what you've done across the board. So that's the kind of yeah. three-pronged strategy. Well, you guys disrupted yourself. You have your own marketing cloud now, or what do we, it's not our marketing cloud, but it's a solution that's mm -hmm. uh, using data. Yeah, but that's a, that's a big data solution. So you know, in the big data world, you use the word lake quite a bit, right? It's again in the context of doing something. So our marketing organization obviously wants to get a better understanding of leads are coming, so they're more effective. I mean, it's a, it's an effectiveness selling. See, they built their own solution. So they were trying to cobble it together. Now basically out of the box, we have a marketing data lake for our own marketing team, where basically they can put as much data as they want to, but it's out of the box built for a marketing analyst. Uh, and they built that internally. They built that internally, which we showed uh, on, the, yeah. on the main stage keynote that Anil showed. And that's what we're taking to customers individual technology, but we're also going to bring technology together as a solution to drive what I call time to value. I always get asked the question, and Peter knows this too, is like, you know, give me an example of companies that are providing digital transformation. And the answer I always say is if they're not disrupting themselves first, yep. then they're not, how can they provide value to you? So if I'm, you want me to buy you know, <laughs> the we, solution, we you actually, guys are doing it yeah, to yourself. We went back to the drawing board ourselves. Look, what is our role in the data world as we go forward for the next 25 years? Great 25 years so far, next 25 years. And we realized that, look, products are great. We do need a platform story to help customers, but we need to get to solutions to help business with time to value. So that I, was I, I love watching other interviews from other journalists and um, ones that might not get the cloud. But the, the question everyone always asks is, what's your cloud strategy? And it's almost like, like there's an answer, you know, page 62. Our cloud strategy is to be multi-tenant, hybrid cloud. You guys, your cloud strategy is not really a cloud strategy, you're, you're, is to be cloud, right? So what, how do you answer that question? Because everyone wants to know, they want to see something. Is there a strategy yeah, there? Yeah. Is it, you know, what, <laughs> so I guess, what is the cloud strategy? Cloud for us cuts across everything. So we started 10 years ago, by the way, when cloud was a thing. And today we are the number one in that market for uh, all things cloud in the data management world. We have four and a half thousand customers on our cloud product. And it's basically a scale product with 25% market share. And for us, cloud is of three types. One is an in the cloud product. You know, customers want an in the cloud product, which is great. But the second one is customers also want our on-prem products to be able to run in an AWS or an Azure. So we have that ability as well. And then connecting the dots for them to be able to do hybrid. So customers want a hybrid solution where they can choose between an in the cloud product as well as their on-premise product being able to run in any kind of a cloud pass environment. So we provide them all. So they have the best choice they can make depending on what they want to do. So your answer is yes. Absolutely. What's your cloud right? Yes, yeah, whatever the customer wants. I mean, <laughs> the, uh, to me, customer is always right. That's yeah, but you guys can run any cloud, so it's oh, not even cloud. about. And, and you know, that's our, we always that's have. True, right? That's true, right? Our Azure philosophy or I want. is we are the Switzerland in the world of data. We, and that, by the way, our agenda is aligned to the customer agenda. We want to give them choice. Azure, AWS, wherever you want to go. So that's a yes then, all cl any cloud, right? Exactly. One of the things that uh, is popular to talk about today is the idea that every company is going to become increasingly a technology company, or a software company yep. specifically, mm -hmm. as they provision more of the value mm -hmm. that they provide to customers over digital interfaces. Yep. Uh, we've also heard that uh, every company needs to have their own API, their set of APIs, and certainly mm -hmm. our research shows a lot of companies are moving in that direction. Data plays a real central role yep. in thinking about how that new model is going to play. As a, as a professional and a thought leader in the realms of both data mm -hmm. and product management, how do you see IT organizations becoming more product management-like, number one, and number two, how does uh, how does Informatica's products support them and make it easier for them to do that? I'd say that's a great question actually. Look, I mean, I grew up as a product manager, so I can relate to that question. To me, as a product manager, the, you don't build a product for the sake of the product. You build a product to solve a customer problem. And to me, as every company is becoming a technology company to your question, think about who is your customer, what is the problem they have, and work your way back. Too often, you know, we have all live in Silicon Valley, we kind of enjoy technology, we like to build something cool. And you know, once in a while you can build something cool and they will come. The idea is like you basically innovate with what the customer wants. So I think that to me, that tenet should never change. And you're right, 
product companies, the value have done that, but as organizations are getting more and more product centric, they have to think, have that basic tenet. Well, certainly digital centric. Ah, absolutely. I mean, digital is, I mean, digital is the revolution which is making every company right. product centric. Right. And in that case, I think we were chatting a little bit like, you know, how do we help our customers? Our goal there is, look, you solve your business problem, leave the complex technology data problems to us. We give you choice. We take all the complexity and hide it. And a great example for that is, take the world of big data. So many engines under the covers, right? You have MapReduce, you have Tez, yeah. you have Spark, we have our own engine, there is Spark Streaming. Different engines can work for different kind of jobs, different kind of workloads. We have what we call is a, you know, executor that lets a customer just choose, just put your workload there, put your job there, we'll decide it for you. You worry about the business problem, let us solve your technology problem for you. Instead of you having to make a decision of either or. So making it easy for you to focus on your business, our business is to make technology easy for you. That's going to mean that uh, developers are going to play an increasingly important role <clears throat> yep. in how uh, a lot of these new capabilities, uh, big data technologies, uh, which today are largely built around that subset of folks within a business who are doing data analysis and visualization, some of those other things. Developers have to attack this problem and create more value out of these technologies, out of data, for everybody. Yep. You guys are going to have to play a central role in describing how that's going to play out if you're going to be successful. Mm -hmm. Talk a bit about, I know this is high on John's list of things to talk about as well. Talk a little, a little bit about how you are developing a developer ecosystem that's capable of liberating more value out of data, out of Informatica's products, and ultimately out of customer activities. Yeah. I, you know, again, it's a very important question, and, and you're right, in the data-centric world, we need developers who know that. I tell you, I think that has been a best-kept secret, and I say that in jest. Um, for the last 25 years, we have built hundreds of thousands of Informatica-focused developers across the globe. Our customers, our partners, and individuals who are all Informatica-focused. So we have hundreds of thousands of developers across the globe. And our focus actually is to take the same skill set and as each technology wave comes, allow them to seamlessly move to that. And what do I mean by that is that today take the world of big data and IoT, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, we have, we just announced our batch, uh, we just announced a streaming product, intelligent streaming, which by the way, works in the same interface as where batch integration works. So if I'm an Informatica developer, all that you have to just do is, in the same workflow, you basically change your batch job to a streaming IoT job. And under the covers, we abstract all that complexity, you can run it on Kafka Square Spark Streaming, you can choose Kafka queues, you obviously have all of the Informatica intelligence that's there that you already know. So the same hundreds of thousands of developers that were there are now IoT ready, big data ready. And that will play a very, very strategic role. But are role. they specialists though? Are they, is there a specialism <laughs> in Informatica that is <laughs> different than some of the SaaS you know, DevOps and or just web developers, which are doing you know, Swift on Apple or other languages, they're building apps. Yep. But they may not be data geeks or they look at data like infrastructure, I just want it to work for mm -hmm. me. So is there a crossover, is there overlap between your developers and this, you know, gen I call it general mainstream developers? I think a little bit, for sure. I mean, because you see, what happens is that today when you're developing an app now, right, you, are, you have to become data centric to develop the app. And the data guys had already been working with the, in the app paradigm to build an app that fits with the data. So that bleed over is happening. In fact, that bleed over of data guys becoming app guys is happening a little bit more because you cannot build an app. An app now has to connect to the data layer that is mm -hmm. there. And there are, in fact, in, in the old days there was one app with one data set. Now you have 3,000 apps with one data set. So the data guy now has a little bit more power than before, right? So you are seeing that where the data guy, the data developers obviously are, are helping the app guys get accelerated, and the app guys just want to focus on the app, which is the right thing to do. They yeah. just want to focus on the It's best. the same as the DevOps paradigm with ops, right, mm -hmm. and infrastructure. Your guys are doing the dev data, if you will, the data part of it. Exactly. Do they become full stack developers if we kind of pick that metaphor forward, like, okay, I'm an informatica developer, do I go up the stack and do that, or am I, is it going to be decoupled from the... From I think, the... so I think there is always going to be a demarcation. So they will go, when, it, when I talked about a data solution strategy, mm -hmm. so you will see those developers be able to go all the way up to create what I called, uh, not apps, but 
data solutions, which are out of the box solutions that people, can, customers can take and run with or it, right? Frameworks or, or frameworks. Or frameworks. And you, you can then put whatever is unique to you as your interface and what workflow you want to do, but they will, what I call, go 60% of the way there. But you know, there will remain a need for an app developer on top, purpose fit for each and every organization because they're going to be different. And that's okay, that's the right thing in my opinion. But if we think about, I mean, I'm going to test this proposition on you. So it used <laughs> to be that we would, uh, that a developer would think about the problem to be solved in terms of process, mm -hmm. and along the way they'd take, they'd create data. Mm -hmm. um, they might have a database and they might work with a data administrator who might create a view and say, oh, we have that data already, here's a view, go create your thing. Um, but it started with the notion of the process and now, because of MDM, because of a data-centric world, we're starting with data. And we're saying, hmm, here's interesting data. I wonder what we could do with this data, but provide it in a way that leads to greater repeatability and certainty yep. and, and new behaviors. Mm -hmm. That seems like it's a different way of thinking. It is, it is. Actually, let me, I'll, I'll give you a specific example of that. Take, if you are a, if you were, if you were the SAP stack, right? You were the, you were the app and you obviously had a unique data model that carried all the way through. Mm -hmm. It was a vertically integrated model. The difference that has happened, now in that case, if you're a developer, you really understood only that data model. Mm -hmm. In the current world, obviously, that's not going to work because the choice for customers is like in thousands of applications at the top. The data guys knew every model. So they become the one to many. They have, the, they have a bigger power. They understand SAP, they understand Salesforce.com, they understand Oracle, they understand. But do they really? That's a big ask. So the, the, that's where the difference is. They understand the frameworks of all of these apps, which is what I say, they will go to a point, but the last mile of putting what is, look, if you're a Wells Fargo, you're into what you want at the last mile will be different from JP Morgan Chase, even though you are retail banks. Mm -hmm. And that should be the case. That last mile will be finished by the app developers, but their role, instead of the old world, which was vertically integrated, will shrink to that last mile, and the data guys who are this much will go up all the way to a little bit more. So that's what will happen. So do you think that we're going to end up using familiar application development techniques to create data, but the prioritization of what gets created is going to be more informed by what's in the data? There has to be. That has to be. Because as I said, like now data about you or John sits in so many different places that before I create a, take an MDM application, right? I need to first understand what one John means to me before I do anything about that. So you can't just start from the app and go to the data. You have to start from the data and then go to the app. Okay. I mean, talk about the, I want to get your perspective on some kind of a personal, personal and obviously professional perspective uh, as a chief product officer. When I say the words keys to the kingdom, what does that mean to you from a data perspective? Is it the MDM? Is it the tentacles? Is it the software? How do you, I mean, I don't mean that in a, I mean in a positive way, yeah, not yeah, like yeah. a land grabbing way, but at the end of the day, you need to have the keys to the kingdom. You have to enable the data to scale this new data model, data 3.0. Yep. What does the keys to the kingdom mean to you? You know, I talked about that yesterday, I'll cover. So there are, there are six transformations that are happening in data. Volume, of course, we know that. Variety, you know, semi-structured, unstructured. Uh, I talked about location data being everywhere in the cloud on premise. I talked about latency, batch, and uh, real time, and, and streaming, and I talked about users, business users. But in my mind, the sixth one is the central. Having a unified view of data, and that's a metadata-driven approach. And what I mean by that is, today, if you are an enterprise, your knowledge about any piece of data that you care about is spread in so many places that for you to make a truly informed decision, you got to have a single point of view. We all get carried away by the customer. Let me give you an example of a shop floor. If I have a robot working on my shop floor, that robot is doing multiple tasks. And that data, by the way, today, streaming data is going somewhere else. And you store every day's data in batch somewhere else. And you store maintenance data somewhere else. If you cannot connect the three, you just don't know what to do. And your robot may be coming down tomorrow and your shop floor will come down. So to me, the critical, critical thing will be that unified view of data, and that's the metadata-driven approach, which is exactly what we believe is going to disrupt the world of data, which is where we... But Jerry Held was saying lambda means lame, so why have batch just do all the processing in stream, real time, where the data is? You, you could, no, I, I, so that is not orthogonal. First, you have to have a single view of data. Yeah. Now, clearly what is changing in this world is that, you know, the old analytical and operational systems are merging, but I still think that it will happen. Look, like any technology, it takes a while. Not everybody yeah. is an Uber, right? Yeah. Uh, take a great example, right? You may get streaming data from your devices about the robot that you can say, okay, is the robot going to go down? Can I make a decision now? That's a streaming decision. But 
you want to match that against batch designers say hey my maintenance about the robot should happen in two weeks or maybe one week so you probably you cannot make that on the fly so i think the journey is going but it will remain a journey but again if you do not have a single view i don't know what decision you can take Okay, I got to ask you what your favorite child is relative to the products, um, <laughs> and, and I want you to answer it. So, give, you know, what is your most exciting thing that you're seeing popping out of Informatica World this year, in terms you know, of products I, or solutions, or even it could be hallway conversations? I, like I'll, I'll pick three. The ones that I'm most excited about. One is tough to pick. One is on the solution side. You know, we have a lot of MDM solutions. We announced MDM going to the cloud. That is transformational. Now, MDM is a journey everybody's making, and clearly from a time to value point of view, customers say, hey, just kind of, can you just run it for me in the cloud? And so I don't have to worry about it and just tell me uh, all the business values. So taking it to the cloud was a big thing. That's transformational for us. Second is on the whole uh, you know, data platform, we, are, we were a batch company, you know us for the longest years. We were real time, but we were not streaming. We announced our intelligent streaming product, which by the way, is the same interface as the batch interface, so you don't have to learn anything new, but now you are IoT enabled right away. So we are, IoT is the next big thing, so the streaming product was definitely very exciting for us. And the third one is uh, all about big data and cloud. So big data is a big emphasis for us, but taking big data to the cloud, you know, as we are basically supporting big data workloads in Amazon or Azure, and today, by the way, you know, I'll close out the Informatica world with a customer, a Syrian, who I think was in the cube, talking about how they are running their big data in the cloud. Now that's bleeding edge. So I'm excited about those. These are all, I think, transformational things for the next uh, five years. Okay, so you have a nice straight and narrow. You guys are going to go really hard, educate the market. You got now IT, traditional target audience for you guys, and the C-level. What's on the roadmap? What can you share with us that's uh, on your mind, uh, the next next mountain you're going to climb? I remember in two years we're going to come back and see if you did as well as me. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I think um, I'll pick two. Obviously these journeys remain. I mean, when I look at, for example, big data and cloud, they are foundational for us. So it's not like an eye. So everything cuts across them. But in terms of two critical things that will define, one is the whole metadata. You know, that live data map journey we are on. We want to, in some ways, index the enterprise's information. So we want to be the Google of the enterprise. But today, if you are, you can Google, you can go to Google and get data on the web. You go to a large organization and say, hey, do you have a search? Yeah. Can you Google any data? No. So we, that's our metadata, live data map. So we are extremely excited about that's that. That's a really great project. That, that's great. Second is, uh, we are disrupting security. You know us for data, we talked about cloud, big data, we talked about IoT, and I think they will do disruptors. We are disrupting security. Security is coming to the data. It is no more a perimeter problem. And you know, I was at Symantec for the longest time, so I understand that yeah. part of the world. Yeah. So we started a journey two years ago, and at RSA we launched a product, Best New Product Award there. Last year we sweeped 10 awards at RSA again. We, that's a new market for us. And we have you a can product. automate that, that's huge yeah. so we innovation have a product. for you can focus on outcomes exactly. and not so deal with the source is an offering there, again a solution for the CISO. We think that's going to be transformational, a new category of security that hasn't existed so far. Is there a conflict between the CISO and the chief data officer evolving? Because one's very strategic innovation, but the CISOs are very much, obviously protecting the data right. is key, but that's a little different view than innovation. They're, they're different, we talk to both, obviously. The C CDO is today still an early part, I think they're more focused on, hey, governance, can I understand the footprint of my data? So they're evolving. They're not yet into security. I do think that that's where the Venn diagram will be between the CISO, because as security comes more and more to the data, yeah. the CDO will have a sense of the data, but he will have to partner with the CISO to say, hey, this is the best way to secure it. Let me see if I can just uh, explain a little bit. So you're saying that as security comes more to the data, it means as data becomes the primary citizen in the security regime. That's exactly, you, you put it far better than me. Yeah, that's exactly right. That's and, great. And we're put seeing that it. Down, that's notable, put that in the cube gem. Um, like I said yesterday in the, our wrap up, you guys should really run the table on this market. You get the top down view nailed down. In that organic innovation, that's going to be something we're going to be watching closely. So yeah, yeah. Um, we'll be tracking those developers. Thanks for sharing your insight and thanks for sharing some of the product roadmap and uh, just all the great stuff over the years. Congratulations. And, um, Thanks for coming on. Well, thank you. Thanks, John. Thanks, Peter. Appreciate okay. it. Okay, we are live here in San Francisco for Informatica World. Sold out, a lot of great products, a lot of great action. Again, continue on their mission of data, single view of the data, love the live map stuff, a lot of great product innovation. Certainly, at the end of the day, it's all about outcomes. This is theCUBE bringing you great content outcomes. We'll be right back with more after this short break. I'm John Furrier with Peter Burris. Be right back.
Hi, this is Chris Devaney from Data.